Hello, podcast listeners. We know podcasts are a great way to catch up on a program that you may have missed on KSJE, and it's provided as a free service of this radio station. But you know, KSJE is now listener supported, and so while you enjoy this podcast, we hope that you'll also take some time to join KSJE. You become a member today. It's quite easy to do. Just go to our website at ksje.com slash support and pick the level of support that best matches your budget. Thanks again for listening. Here's your podcast. Eleven minutes past eight o'clock. It is Tuesday morning, the twenty-second day of August, twenty twenty-three. Good morning, everyone. I'm Scott Micklin. Thanks for tuning in to KSJE ninety point nine FM over the air right here in San Juan County, New Mexico, in Durango, Colorado. We broadcast, of course, at one hundred three point three FM. And if you're anywhere else on the planet and want to tune us in. Just go to our website, ksje.com. We also want to welcome our viewers this morning who are watching this visual radio program. The video is streaming out live to the KSJE Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. So we're glad that you are all with us this morning, everybody, because coming up, we are talking about the movie industry and local film and the celebration of local film and filmmakers. It is the upcoming film festival put on by Film Four Corners in September. We'll be talking more about that with my guests in the next few moments right here on KSJE. Then later on this morning, we'll be checking in with Amber Francisco over at the Farmington Regional Animal Shelter. She'll be telling us about Olivia. That is the cat you see on the screen right there. Please keep tuned till 8.50 a.m. this morning for our Adopt-A-Pet Tuesday segment right here on KSJE. Next hour, it's our classical music program, Roving with the Arts, and Mick Hess will be here featuring music from the one and only John Philip Sousa and also the great Mozart. You'll hear some of that coming up today after the news at 9.06 on KSJE Today. Don't forget, you can connect with us on our Facebook page and YouTube channel and whatever our Twitter account is called these days. I think it's X and also our Instagram page if uh, you'd like to connect with us there. And if you're a podcast person, you can find KSJE Podcasts where you're probably already listening to them on places like iTunes and Spotify and iHeartRadio and Google Podcasts and Pandora and the list as the podcasts go on and on and on. So we hope you'll subscribe to us and maybe discover a new program that you may have missed. Uh, outside our studios here at San Juan College, it is a partly cloudy Tuesday morning, 73 degrees at the moment. We are expecting a partly sunny day today. 50% chance of rain showers back in the forecast along with some breezy conditions. And today's high reaching 90 degrees this afternoon. 69 overnight tonight, 85 with a less of a chance of rain tomorrow, 82 on Thursday, 83 on Friday, 86 by Saturday. But again, that chance of shower is still in the forecast for the next several days. Back with my guests right after this. KSJE is supported by San Juan Regional Medical Center, whose vision is to deliver world-class care, making life better for the communities they are privileged to serve. Offering a comprehensive range of inpatient, outpatient and emergency care services so residents can live life better here. San Juan Regional Medical Center, community owned and operated here for you. It's time for the 34th annual TOTA Festival over Labor Day weekend at the Farmington Civic Center, featuring Native American artisans, food, a cultural expo, an authentic Navajo rug auction and more. Don't forget the Tota 5K River Run and Walk and Joe Tahoney Jr. and White Mountain Apache Crown Dancers. The Tota Festival, September 2nd and 3rd at the Farmington Civic Center, is a jolt-worthy event. Find out more at farmingtonnm.org. 
Back in Studio A with my guest this morning to talk about Film Four Corners, we have with us the chairman of the board. I thought he was dead, but he's not. <laughs> Devin Neely, not Frank Sinatra. Devin Neely is here this yeah, morning the from chairman, uh, I like that. Film Four Corners. Good morning. Good morning, Seth. Thanks for having us. Good to have you here. Also, board member Jordan Richards is here as well. Good morning to you. Welcome. Good morning. Thank Th you. Thank you both for being here. And it is almost uh, film festival time, and it's yeah. an exciting time to celebrate Film in New Mexico, the state has made a big commitment to attracting filmmakers and offering incentives and things and celebrating film and local films and, and things like that. That's all what you have in store, correct? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the state of New Mexico, uh, quite a ways back, instituted a, a tax incentive program to incentivize more productions to be working in New Mexico. And it's really working. The, the state legislature is behind that tax incentive. So there's more opportunities for production companies to come here and work and not just work but employ New Mexicans use New Mexico businesses and really uh, build into the economy of New Mexico. We've seen that growth in the Albuquerque and Santa Fe corridor with uh, Netflix uh, and Albuquerque Studios and, and Universal and all those things going on down there. Uh, I hear these days you can't go anywhere in Albuquerque without film crews bumping into each other on the streets. There's a lot of action going on in that central corridor. Uh, film Four Corners was created as a way to uh, bring some of that production up here. Uh, if you build it, they will come, but they have to know it's built, right? And so Film Four Corners was created as a way to let people know what we have here in the area, and so much of it is the natural beauty, what already exists here. But Film Four Corners additionally endeavors towards training a workforce and getting people ready to work for productions that come into the area. Right, very good. And really promoting, I think, too, some of these local filmmakers and some yeah. of the short films that they're doing and uh, and celebrating them and their creativity and, and things along that line, too, I would think. Absolutely. You know, film is an art form, just like painting, just like drawing, just like, I don't know, stone sculpture. It takes... Uh, in in some cases a lot less time in some cases a lot more time you're using different tools you're using different media but the bottom line is you're telling a story and you're creating uh, art uh, right. and we want to uh, really celebrate the people that are creating art locally uh, right here at San Juan College the DMAD program the digital media and arts D-M-A-D? What does the D stand for? Uh, design, I think. Design, thank right? you. Yeah. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> uh, the the DMAD program right. has sure. a lot of uh, aspiring filmmakers. And what happens when they graduate? They leave. Uh, we film, don't want that. Exactly. We want them here. We want them uh, contributing not only to the tax base, to, but to the cultural base of San Juan County in the Four Corners. Right. Very true. You mentioned those incentives from the state level, and I just wanted to point out, I think that there was a recent addition or kind of change to that to Correct. offer even more incentives if crews got out of the Rio Grande Corridor, like to places like yeah. San Juan County. And that maybe has helped maybe a little bit too of maybe having folks take a second look at this part of the world? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, prior to July, the, the tax incentive was up to 35%, and 5% of that is for shooting outside of the Santa Fe and Albuquerque corridor. In January, at the legislature, uh, the, the, uh, an addition, additional 5% for the out-of-zone uh, tax credit was implemented. So now if you're shooting in San Juan County, you can get up to 40% tax rebate uh, for all the work that you do. And that's that's a really broad tax rebate. Uh, it includes travel if you use an approved New Mexico travel agent. It includes, well, there's no tax on food, but if you're using a caterer, right. uh, you know, you're getting a tax rebate on everything that you spend uh, Ten percent of that is for shooting in the non-Albuquerque Santa Fe corridor. Uh, Five percent of that is um, uh, using a qualified production facility, and then the base is twenty-five percent. Gotcha. And everyone knows a uh, production lives or dies on the quality of its caterer. Uh, you <laughs> know, you're not wrong. I say, uh, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. Jordan Richards, I want to bring you into the conversation a little bit too about the upcoming film festival and just some of the things that maybe you look, you're looking forward to at this at this event, which we should mention is coming up September what seventh through the ninth, I believe, right next month. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I've been uh, helping review some of the submissions, and mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, I got involved in the board. 
forward because uh, I'm a film fan. I really enjoy it. I like the, uh, like Devin talked about, the art uh, that, every, that, that goes into it. And so getting to watch some of these submissions has been a lot of fun uh, and really see what people are doing. Uh, and then just trying to support the, the community and, and building up that, uh, you know, the, everything on the production side, like we were talking about, right, <clears throat> that right. Devin's talking about. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. And it's really, it's really interesting to see the, 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 the background of it. Sure. Any genre that is your favorite over others when it comes to film? <sighs> oh, geez. Um, I'll put you I, on the spot. I know. I, <laughs> uh, I mean, when it comes to, this is different than, you know, the, the, a big, you know, film, obviously. I, I'm, right. a, I'm a comedy fan and when it comes to, you know, going and sitting in the movie theater. But uh, I just, I, when, when I'm reviewing these submissions, I love it all. I, I mean, it's just really, really interesting. And the fact that these people take their time and their effort and for a lot of them at their own cost to, uh, to make these, th- these films. And it's really, it's just, it's awesome. Right, true. I would say so, and I've been impressed too with some of the local films that I've seen that are being produced and, and entered into some of these other film festivals and contests and things like that. And so, um, so part of this will be viewing and screening some of these films that have been submitted that have uh, won some awards and things locally. But you also bring in some some guests as, as well, correct, to kind yeah. of share some of their insights about the industry, jobs in the industry, mm-hmm. making connections in the industry. Because I think that's part of this too, is networking. And you know, sometimes not what you know, but who you know. Yeah, absolutely. This this uh, group, this organization, and and the the event started in 2019 with the Four Corners Film Festival. You may remember there was a, a fashion show and and just a, a, a whole spectacle. And we've sort of scaled back since then. Uh, in 2020, it was wholly online. In 2021, it was a hybrid. Uh, we took a break in 2022, and we're back and better than ever uh, this year. And, but we're focusing on putting these films on the screen at the historic and newly renovated Tota Theater in downtown. There are so many filmmakers <clears throat> who are working on their phone. You know, that's where you start. You you start making short films on your phone with your iPhone, with your Android, whatever it may be, uh, and you watch it on your computer monitor. And then the next biggest screen is the big TV in your house. And we have this very unique opportunity to be able to put these uh, works on the big screen, a true big screen, in a movie theater. And nothing better than a 1950s era uh, restored crown jewel of downtown Farmington in the Tota Theater. So we're very excited for that opportunity. In addition to that, it's those students, those filmmakers that are interested in the in the art and the hobby and the the it's more than a hobby, really. <clears throat> Uh, but they are looking for opportunities to to better themselves, and that's why we have some of these uh, workshops uh, that you had on the screen just a minute ago. We have right. some uh, some workshops for uh, screenwriters. We have some workshops for. Um, uh, uh, sound uh, and foley, uh, and so we're we're very excited for for these events. And and it's the the event is a low cost uh, film festival. We want everybody to be able to come and enjoy this. Right. And hopefully, uh, we'll see you there too, Scott. I would look forward to it. I think I saw maybe twenty bucks get you in all all yep. three days. All three days. Yeah, all screenings. Full pass. Yep, that's right. All screenings. Uh, there's a few after hours events and and the uh, workshops as well and uh, we hope that people will come out and see them. Thanks, very good. I want to read a couple off the screen here of Please. the folks that you've got coming in. Dr. Elizabeth Stommer is coming in, um, Executive Director of the Stagecoach Foundation. We've heard a lot about them, a New Mexico-based organization, yeah. I think, promoting film. Correct. And so she is coming in talking so she's about... she's going to be talking about uh, 48-hour film festivals. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Getting everything done. And mm-hmm. soft skills, resume building for the film and TV industry. Um, Anna Dara is here, founding partner of Film Nest Studios. She's a guest speaker Friday, 9 a.m., mm-hmm. coming in as well. And, uh, and so there's just some of the things. And, of course, we're on the website, and folks can find that and go online and read more about what's coming, yep. buy tickets, I suppose, too, right? Yep, and, absolutely. And get all set See to go. See the schedule and... Uh, and get excited. We, we, we're just hoping that we have a lot of people in the Tota Theater to uh, check out the events. Right. And I'm going to ask you to put on your other hat for a moment because oh, you yeah. are kind of the film, is it liaison for San Juan County with your other duties as assigned? <laughs> <laughs> I am one of the film liaisons. Okay, I work you. in concert with Tanya Stenson right. uh, over at the Farmington Convention and Visitors Bureau, which is now Go Farmington. Yes, I believe so. <clears throat> right. 
Uh, Tanya has been the, the film liaison for San Juan County for quite a while. Uh, in my other hat as the film manager for San Juan County. That's the title I was That's the one. thinking I, of, yes. I am a liaison, but uh, we're in the process of finishing up, putting the finishing touches on a back lot oh, uh, studio. Right. So, you know, a lot of times when you think of back lot, I, I immediately think of... Uh, uh, a western set you know and maybe there's a saloon that you can go in and and check out the bar but some of those storefronts are just that they're storefronts and there's nothing behind it um, and so one of the five percents of the tax credit is to use a qualifying facility which can be a studio space or a back lot we have built a back lot that is a primitive village style you know, low flat roofs, Vega and Latia construction. Uh, we think it could pass as a, as a Native American village, a Spanish village, an uh, Iranian Iraqi village. You know, uh, things Middle like Eastern that. Middle Eastern village. Middle Eastern village. Right? That's sure. a yep. That's and a very and the good reason you that. chose that was because your research showed that there weren't a lot of those types of back lots already in existence, at least in my recollection. Correct. There's None. a lot of old Western towns. Yep. Um, but maybe not villages like this that are maybe easily accessible by some of these crews that want to build that want to make a film with needing that type of backlog. Correct. And our, our consultant said, uh, what happened after Vietnam? People came back from war and made movies about it. There were a lot of movies made about Vietnam. And if you think about how long the U.S. has been involved in conflicts in the Middle East, uh, there is an anticipation there, there will be a pretty good number of films being made about those conflicts overseas. Uh, and so to have this area that we can market as a very unique thing, that there's right. nothing else in the state of New Mexico, and I think there's only one standing set in uh, California that looks like this. Uh, but we already have the desert. We already have the, <laughs> the, the right. low growth or lack thereof in some cases. Uh, we don't have to import any of that. Uh, and, and it doesn't look like Southern California, unlike the set of MASH and, and others that, that were set in Southern California and really don't look like where they're supposed to be. Right, right. Really interesting. And so I would imagine once that gets opened up and marketed, um, hopefully there'll be a lot of buzz and a lot of interest in maybe uh, doing some productions here, which is the idea. Yep, that's our hope. That and is so exactly our hope. What's the timeline? Uh, you said soon. It's a great question. Soon. Yes. Okay. All right. There you go. Okay. I had to ask it. Uh, the, the buildings are by and large constructed. We're, uh, I say finishing touches, but um, we're building some fencing around that property. Uh, and, and we anticipate having a, a grand opening in the next couple months. Gotcha. I'll look forward to my invitation. You will get one. Okay. Very good. I imagine you don't want mountain bikers like streaming through the background <laughs> of, a, of a shoot sometime, right, on this back Actually, we're, we're, we're hoping to call in a favor with the National Guard and maybe they can bring some of their heavy equipment up there to show off what it would look like uh, if it were in a Middle Eastern conflict. I see. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Well, that could be kind of interesting, too. Yeah. Let's see how that goes. But there you are. My guest this morning from Film Four Corners, we were talking about the upcoming film festival. Festival, September 7th, 8th, and 9th, uh, mostly centered at the Tota, Fest, uh, Tota Theater, pardon Correct. me, in downtown farming. The Tota Festival is another show. Um, but uh, we are talking about all of this coming up and really great opportunities for filmmakers, uh, writers, producers, uh, actors um, to, to meet some of these folks who are really in the industry in Absolutely. New Mexico and really building this infrastructure in New Mexico. We keep hearing about it, as you mentioned, from the Rio Grande Corridor, the Netflix studios, the Universal NBC uh, installation down there. There's been a lot of investment in, uh, in New Mexico and the state has kind of embraced um, that and, uh, and to, I think, good, good results. There's a lot of folks who are employed in the, uh, in the movie and TV industry here. Yep, in the that, state. that's exactly right. Um, billions of dollars uh, is the return. I think it's in the 3.8 billion range uh, since the inception of the film tax credit. Um, we don't want all of that work up here, frankly. We want about 10% of that work up here. Uh, That'd be enough. But, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, thousands of New Mexicans employed, uh, some of them supporting the industry. We, we know of prop houses and grip companies that, that, that work uh, on contract with productions. And we know of folks who are day labor or you know, work on a, on a production as a, as a grip, as a dolly, as a production assistant. In fact, I took production assistant training, which lasts about six hours. And after six hours, you get put on a list. And, and if productions are looking for PAs, they give you a call. If you got time, go down and work for them. And it's uh, uh, pretty much day rate labor, but it's 
after, I want to say, 60 hours, you can apply to be in the union. Mm -hmm. And when you're in the union, you get into the different trades, uh, makeup, hair, uh, grips, props, uh, all of those things are unionized trades within the, the industry. And, and they're well paid. Uh, they're, there are benefits that are uh, aligned, which is, and, and we must address the strike that's going sure. on right now that's with right. the writers. Um, this is not affected by the strike. And, and the reason for that is all of the people that have that have uh, submitted are independent filmmakers right uh, they're not working with the union specifically uh, we have one film called union but it doesn't have anything to do with the unions it wasn't made as a union film. right uh, but uh, it's uh, and they may have even been produced before the strike was announced I would assume too right? correct yeah so that's that. that's correct um, uh, but but really this is a way to support the unionized folks because when we show that there is such a need and a desire and a want for this work and these productions, uh, the, the the unions have more leverage uh, in their negotiations. Right. Very true. Uh, about how many films would you say have been submitted this year? Do you guys know that number? Jordan, do you know? Or how many did you watch when you were helping to judge some of these? I have watched, uh, I think I'm right at like 20 right now. I think we had 40 submissions Wow, somewhere in there. Yeah. I, I, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. I think it's somewhere in that area. But, okay. yeah, I think I've watched about 20 so far. Still going. Gotcha. Okay. That's quite a, that's quite a big number to me. Yeah. I mean, is that is that good? Is that what you were hoping for? Fewer than last uh, the last few years, but okay. uh, still a strong showing. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, and, again, as things kind of come back out of uh, – being shut down over you know a year and a half or so, I think it's impressive to kind of see things coming back and yeah. being able to gather and, and celebrate these local industries and all the things that the Film Four Corners is doing to support filmmakers. And, and there's a lot of groups, I think, in, in Farmington and San Juan County. If folks are listening to this program and just hearing that, oh, I'd like to get involved with, with film or, you know, I'm, I think I'm a creative person and, you know, they really need to reach out and maybe look for some of these local film groups because it seems like they're always looking for ideas or, or volunteer crew members to go out and help on a yeah. on a project some weekend. And some, some of these guys will, will produce a film in 48 hours. Yep. And there are some contests that, that ask for that. Yep, 48-hour film festivals. We hope to uh, What a hold... unique name. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I wouldn't have known what it was about otherwise. Right, uh, right. I, there, we, we hope to have a 48-hour film festival the next year cool. uh, here in Farmington, and we hope that uh, we have some more folks participating in some fun events like that. Very good. Um, and again, this whole idea of networking and just, you know, it, it seems like this is, you know, I, I think we have this kind of image of Hollywood and, and movie stars and, and filmmakers and they're all in a very unique bubble and they travel around. But I mean, I think at events like this, some of these folks that have a lot of great credentials are pro very approachable and you can visit with them after maybe their, their presentation and, and things along that line to really try to get some connections and, and insights into the industry. Yeah, there's, there's going to be some meet and greet opportunities. All of these uh, presenters are going to take time to talk to folks afterwards uh, and really answer questions and and uh, th that's the whole goal of a, a smaller festival like this is to be able to really interface with the people that have the knowledge. Nice, very true. We're looking at the uh, the website, of course, Film Four Corners. There's all kinds of information there. Um, there is going to be the screening of at the end of the Santa Fe Trail. Um, that is a premiere screening at the festival. Yeah, we're very excited for that. Uh, September the eighth, Friday night. Uh, <laughs> That's also during uh, the uh, Rock Crawler Takeover downtown. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so there's going to be a lot going on downtown. We hope that some folks will take a break and come inside out of the heat right. uh, and check out this premiere. I'm really excited for this film. The wonderfully air-conditioned Tota Theater. Yeah, that's correct. Right. We should make a mention of it as well. And we'll have popcorn. There you uh, go. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> Very true. And and again, I want to talk a little bit about the renovations that have been done at the Tota, mm -hmm. and some of it under the county's watch, some of it under the city's watch. It's now managed by the city of Farmington. Correct. But part of that, as I recall again, was to have this kind of um, office space available for crews that want to maybe use the back lot or use some of the other sights and sounds of the of the area and base their their production here and not yeah. have to commute 
out of Santa Fe or, or Albuquerque every mm -hmm. day. Is that still the idea? Well, productions usually set up a, a production office near to where they're working, and and that's that's all the things that the office would you know payroll and accounting and uh, pay the caterer exactly right. the Very important, important stuff. Right. I'm still stuck on that. Uh, <laughs> an army marches on its stomach, and so does a film production. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, but they'll they'll set up uh, an office space wherever they can, whether they rent out an Airbnb and you know put the beds up against the wall and and set up offices or or rent an office space or you know whatever that is we identified that there was need for some of that in our area because when productions are here it's hard to find commercial space with enough room that will do a six to eight week lease uh, to get these folks some places to work uh, so the two the second and third floor of the Tota theater has three four four offices uh, and three of those will be made available uh, for rental by production companies if they're in town and they need them. Gotcha. And I think uh, the idea was having high-speed internet and some of the other things available yep. in those spaces so yep. that they could they could do some of the things that they need to, to do, whether, you know, as you described. So. Exactly. And one of those things is uploading dailies. Uh, not yeah. every, not all the big wigs from Hollywood are going to be out here shooting. And so what they do is they take the daily footage and send it back to Hollywood. And so you got to have a decent, you know, internet signal, which right. mm -hmm. I, I just, some, some, somewhere, some places it's going to work and somewhere it's not. But okay. in the Tota Theater, there's fiber uh, optic internet that's part of the city's network that uh, has high speed upload uh, for, for just such a cause. Nice. That should work pretty well. So I hope so. There, there you go. Very good. Just about out of time this morning, gentlemen, but I wanted to just uh, final thoughts. Uh, Jordan Richards about the, the film festival and your work on the Film Four Quarters uh, Board of Directors. I'm um, really excited about the festival, uh, and I'm uh, even though still new to the board, uh, I'm enjoying it. Uh, I think we have some uh, extra seats open, uh, so people are, or at least uh, room to help us <laughs> volunteer. Maybe yeah, so. we definitely need some uh, <laughs> always looking for help. Uh, okay. <laughs> we'll very, plug that. Very cool. But uh, yeah, it's thanks for having us on. I appreciate it. It's always a good time to come over here and. Uh, excited for the festival. Great talking about film. That's true. Devin Neely, uh, final thoughts with you and uh, for folks to come out and see the see these films. Absolutely. Support the, the, the filmmakers uh, that that are on the smaller end of the scale these days and could be pretty big a lot later on. You know, shake their hand, get their signature, and uh, keep it for a few years and see what happens. There's a lot of really inspiring talent uh, that's going to be showcased this week. Uh, as Jordan mentioned, volunteers are always appreciated, and there is a form on our website, filmfourcorners.com, that you can fill out if you want to volunteer. Uh, we, we need some folks to just pop some popcorn and, and be a smiling face behind the concession stand for, uh, for a few hours during the day, and then uh, if you volunteer, you get to see the films for free. So okay. uh, not a, a much better deal to be had, but uh, again, we, we appreciate you having us, Scott, and glad to see you in person, not just in the paper. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that, too. That's Not right. in the funny pages, I guess. That's very true, and uh, cause that's <laughs> happened more than once, for sure. So there you are. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for coming in. Good luck with the film festival. We're glad it's back this year. And again, it'll be at the Tota Theater in downtown Farmington on September 7th, 8th, and 9th. Coming up very, very soon, everyone. Thank you so much. Back with more right after this. This is KSJE. Did you enjoy that podcast? We hope that you did. And if you did, share it with your friends. And if you really want to keep podcasts like this coming, please support KSJE. You can do it easily online at ksje.com.